Hello, my name is Nicholas and welcome to the first episode of Programming Concepts. Today we're going to talk about immutability and immutable objects. An immutable object is an object that is read-only after it has been created. By this, we mean that once it has been instantiated, we can no longer modify it. To illustrate why immutable objects are useful, uh, we're going to talk a little bit first about mutable objects and we're going to use Java as an example programming language here. Everything starts with a class. Here we have a class rectangle with two fields, height and width, one constructor that takes two integers, height and width, and we have getters and setters for both of those fields. Objects are instances of classes. In this case, we have one instance of the class rectangle here with a height of 15 and a width of 200. These instances are usually stored somewhere in memory. So there's a, an address in your memory that has the, the information about this object. If we take a closer look at what happens when we want to make a new instance of rectangle here, uh, we'll have a variable called my rectangle where, where we'll store it. And we'll just say new rectangle, so we'll call the constructor with a height of 4 and a width of 5. This is going to create that new instance of rectangle here with the height of 4 and the width of 5. It's going to be stored in memory in this imaginary address 2 here, 002. And the key thing to understand here is that this variable my rectangle is not directly pointing to, to the instance of the new rectangle here. Instead, my rectangle is going to point to a location in memory, and that location in memory just so happens to point to that instance of rectangle. Well, what happens if we want to modify the width here of rectangle? We'll say my rectangle set width, and it's going to directly modify the, the value of width here in the, in the instance of rectangle uh, that's associated with that address in memory, which my rectangle is pointing to. So what happens if we instantiate a new rectangle and assign that to my rectangle? Well, in the same way as before, uh, when we create a, a new instance, a new instance is created here, uh, it's associated with a, an address in memory, and the pointer, uh, my rectangle, is now pointing to that new address in memory. In the case of Java, garbage collection will take care of, uh, of getting rid of this in memory so that we're not using resources for nothing. So now let's talk a little bit about what we mean when we talk about passing by reference. So in this situation, we've just instantiated the new rectangle with a height and width of both of 50. Uh, how is it possible, or is there a scenario where, where here we, we want to uh, have this new variable area here, we get area, uh, we pass it the rectangle, then we, we print out the width of the rectangle that we passed it, and the, the answer is 1. So in this situation, we've gone from instantiate the new rectangles with, with both width and height 50, and then we print out the width, and it's changed to 1. How is that possible? It's possible because, at least in Java, we pass by reference, which means that when we have this kind of method here, uh, get area that takes, the, that takes a rectangle, uh, this rectangle here that's being passed to get area is uh, a reference to the same address in memory here, which means that if the get area is implemented badly, in this case, uh, we're, we do calculate the area correctly, but after that, we change the width of rectangle. It's going to change the width of the same, same reference here that we have in, in this, uh, this one, one call above in the, in the stack where, we, where we're calling get area and, uh, and magically the value is changing for us. So this is risky because it might not be the same person implementing get area and the same person calling get area. And without going and digging deep into the implementation of get area, it's hard to know that it's going to magically change that value. This is why we like, uh, usually we like immutable objects and, and mutable objects have this, this sort of unpredictable behavior that we'd like to avoid. Clearly here, the set width is the problem, and the fact that we're, we're modifying the, the, the object is the problem. If it was not possible to modify the object, uh, then the person implementing this getArea method here 
uh, had, would have no way of changing the width to 1. So how do we prevent this? How do we prevent modifying the object and making immutable objects in Java? Looking again at the description of our rectangle class here, and knowing that the problem is calling methods like set width, then the natural progression there would be to identify set width and set height as the problematic methods, and simply create a class where, where we don't have those setters. And that's, that's the short answer. Of course, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And in fact, Oracle's official Java documentation does define a strategy for defining immutable objects. However, the list is pretty long. So if we look at the first item on the list, don't provide setter methods. Uh, we already did that, and that's what we just looked at. But, but the problem is that the list goes on. Make all fields final and private. Don't allow subclasses to override methods. Uh, don't provide methods that modify the mutable objects, and so on. That's a lot of stuff to remember, and it's going to, to, to be really hard to make this work with a large team of engineers. I'm not saying it's impossible with a small team of, of disciplined professionals, but, but this is still pretty hard. And if we're relying only on these instructions, I feel like there are, are easier ways to, to avoid the kind of problems that we have with mutable objects. Another alternative is to use libraries. For Java, we have, for example, uh, immutables. So it's a library providing a bunch of data structures that are immutable and that you can use in your code base. For JavaScript, we have something equivalent called immutable, which provides us with uh, a set of, uh, of collections for JavaScript that are immutable. But of course, as with any kind of external dependencies like these, uh, there's always, always questions that you have to answer, like, well, like what is going to be the life cycle of this, uh, this technology or library? Is it, how long is it going to be maintained? Uh, how, how good is the community support? And so on. While it still feels like there is no standard way to have uh, immutable data structures in most mainstream programming languages at the moment, it's still good to understand the, the pitfalls with mutability and, and why immutability is, is something that's worth taking a look at. Thank you for listening and until next time.